projectile motion, a baseball is thrown at an angle of 25 degrees to the ground at a speed of 23 meters per second. If the ball was caught, now it gives you if the ball was caught 42 meters away, how long was it in the air and how high was the tallest spot the ball got? I don't know if I said that right. In other words, how high does the ball go if you did that? Now, we, in this problem, we do know the speed of the ball. So it starts off like this. I mean, we know that the actual path of the ball will look something more um, in the lines of, you know, out through here like this. And it'll make this parabolic arc and somebody catches it over here 42 meters away. Well, uh, several ways that I'm going to go about doing this problem. Uh, I'm going to look at this triangle that's formed right here. So I'm going to look at this triangle here. And uh, I want to look at it in terms of its velocity. So if I look at... First of all, I am cutting this in half because that's a key point right there. That's going to be the highest point, although gravity is going to have its way with it and pull it back down. If gravity wasn't a factor, then it would hit this point up here. Um, but we are, we are taking that into effect too. So there's going to be some complex stuff here. But what I don't have is the time. I need to find some sort of time interval here first before I can do any of this stuff. And... Uh, I do know that the halfway distance is 21. So to go from here to here is 21 meters. Um, but for the purple writing, our velocity triangle, if this is a right angle here, I want to know what this V sub X thing is. Everybody see that? That little V X. That's the horizontal uh, velocity, like the ball's shadow going cruising across the ground. I want to know how fast that's going, and then I can figure out how long it takes to go 21 meters, and then I can find the time. So I need to do a little initial trig problem. I'll just hand sketch that where this is 25 and this is 23 meters per second, um, and we want to know this distance. We're going to call that vx. This is a right angle. So it's going to be cosine. So cosine of 25 degrees equals this V sub X. That's the horizontal velocity over 23. Now we started this problem on Friday and then got cut off. So I want to pick it back up. So we're going to multiply 23 times the cosine of 25. Let's see here. 23 times the cosine of 25 is 20.84 which we're going to call 20.8 and that would be meters per second. So as we're throwing it at an angle of 25 degrees, the absolute sideways displacement or uh, velocity rather is 20.8 meters per second and it has to go 21 meters. So the question is how long does that take? Well, we know that V sub X equals Delta X over T and we can plug stuff in here. Let me change colors a little bit, make it a little brighter. Uh, so 20.8 equals 21 over T. Okay, this would be your distance. This would be your speed here. And so to, to solve this, we're going to take 21 and divide it by 20.8. Just like if you ever on the fence on that, make yourself out a little fraction like 8 equals 24 over 3. And uh, if you're solving for the 3 down here, you would take 24 and divide it by 8. So that's 24 divided by 8. I know a lot of people get that backwards. So this is 21 divided by 20.8. And it comes out to be about 1.01 .01 seconds. 1.01 .01 seconds. So this is our time time interval. Well, now that we know our time interval, we can figure out how long it was in the air. Um, we can uh, tell how high the, the tallest spot is. Uh, first of all, if it takes 1.01 .01 seconds to go half this distance, well, guess how long it takes to go the other half? Well, assuming that the ball's speed didn't slow down during this trip, 
it would take just about two seconds. So this would be 1.01 seconds plus another 1.01 seconds. So we're talking all just about about two seconds. All right, now, how do you get the highest spot that the ball goes, the highest point the ball travels? We're going to do this, this massive delta Y equation, which is delta Y equals VI sine theta times T minus one-half GT squared. And I think we have all the stuff we need to do this. Uh, we're just going to plug everything in. So our answer will be delta Y. So delta Y equals VI, which is 23 meters per second. I just put 23 there. Times the sine of 25. Times our time interval. And our time interval will be... Now we want... This is important here. We want to know where it's at here. Okay, not over here. Uh, so our time interval that we're going to use is half of the trip time, which is 1.01 seconds. I'm just going to call that one, if that's cool with everybody. Minus one half G. I guess I could go ahead and do that. So 9.81 times T squared, which would be one squared. So this whole thing here on the on the right side of this minus sign, the one squared is one. 9.81 times a half is 4.905. Um, times one is 4.905. So that whole thing becomes that. Now the other side is the sine of 25 equals times 23 equals times one, which is 9.72. 9.72 and then of course we just subtract so 9.72 basically minus 4.905 is somewhere around 4.82 meters so this ball actually only went 4.82 meters off the ground now if you out of curiosity which I think we should do maybe it only hit right there if we look just take this problem just a step farther I'll do this in green if we make this little triangle make it right above there and we look at its distance if we were to say okay this is 21 meters how big would this side be well one would think it would be 4.82 meters but let's actually see what it actually is and I did say actually twice that's important. So the tangent of 25 equals x over 21. So let's see what this is, just out of curiosity. The problem didn't ask us to do it, but tangent of 25, that is 9.8. Is about 9.8 meters. So that would be just, you know, double that. So it would be the actual path and where you know this the theoretical path of the ball would be the green dot the actual path is somewhere right right in here or about in the middle and uh, that is of course due to gravity pulling it down for a second all right you guys have a good one